Uh, there's a life-threatening gap between the rising number of mentally ill patients and the response of public health care. The life is a domaini tragedy brought this devastating reality into the spotlight. 143 people lost their lives. So how do we stop this sort of travesty from ever happening again? Joining me in the studio is a clinical psychologist, Cassandra Govender, and the University of KwaZulu-Natal medical law professor, Sylvester Chima, joining us live from Durban studio. Welcome both of you. Sylvester Chima, let me start off with you. Paint a picture for us of the situation in our country, the, the problems that we are seeing from a mental health point of view? Well, the problem with the mental health issue is that it's not only a South African problem, but it's a global problem. It's a global pandemic. In that the World Health Organization estimates that there are almost 300 million people who are suffering from depression alone and almost 60 million suffering from bipolar disorders. Now, in South Africa, we have a unique problem because of we are dealing with a situation where a lot of people will have HIV AIDS, and about 40% of that population of people who have HIV AIDS also have associated mental health disorders. So mental health problems is a global problem. Unfortunately, what is going on is that uh, not much attention or not much resources is being devoted to the taking care of mental health disorders in terms of education, in terms of uh, finance, financing services, and in terms of training people who take care of mental health, uh, people who have, have mental health disorders. And so why is that is happening? I mean, if have. it Although, is as big so a problem as you paint, why is it not being addressed properly? Yes. Well, like I said, it's because people are ignoring the issue of mental health. Uh, one of the reasons why we are bringing this to Africa Health this year is because we had recently had, uh, not too long ago, very high-profile uh, South African uh, individuals who, who, who committed suicide, most, most often associated with uh, untreated mental health disorders. So it's something that people are ignoring because, uh, uh, you know, people see mental health disorder like that is something that's stigmatizing. You know, but people who have mental health disorders are stigmatized, they are discriminated against, and therefore they are not willing to come forward to take the treatment that they need. So what, one of the things that we need to do is to increase publicity and education of the public to understand that mental health disorders, it's the same like any other disorder, like somebody who has malaria or has HIV, and the people who have it, who have anxiety, who have depression, who have bipolar, who feel it may, may, may not be feeling normal, should come forward either to, they don't need it to go to specialist care. One of the things in South Africa is that uh, every general practitioner in South Africa is also considered to be a mental health care practitioner. Therefore, People should be able to go to their GP or to their general practitioner and seek help and seek assistance in terms of uh, treating whatever mental health disorder they may have. Okay, Cassandra Governor, you see this face to face dealing with these issues. I mean, have you seen a dramatic increase? Are you, are you surprised that we have this number of people who've got these? Disorders? Not really. I think that for a long time we've detached mind and body. So we seem to think that issues in the mind are kind of something completely separate to things that go on in our body. So I'm not surprised. I'm actually, the increasing numbers I think is probably more people coming forward. I think that people have been struggling this, with this for a really, really long time. We've just not given it any kind of airtime. Do you think it's got worse because of things like social media, because people see what's happening and the, the sort of bullying that we're seeing and so many other factors at play, right? Yeah. Well, I, I would think maybe the problems are changing and there are different kinds of stresses, mm. but there were a number of stresses previously before that which people had to face. So I think maybe the way people express their disorders might be different, but I can't say they're increasing because of that. Okay, and uh, Sylvester Chim, I mean, Momentum paid out the most on accidents uh, to suicides and then murder and then, as we were saying, quite frightening, surgery. Do you think that this is a good thing, that medical aides are dealing with these sort of disorders now, and is it giving people confidence to come forward, possibly? Yeah, but we have a problem in South Africa because you're talking about Momentum, which is a private hair care provider. The vast, you know, South Africa has a dichotomous uh, health care system where only 20% of the population are actually able to access private health care mm. and get the help they need. The vast majority of South Africans, because of the inequalities in the society, South Africa is a very unequal, unequal society, so 80% of the population have to access their care 
from the public health care services. And this is what we had the kind of acidimated thing happening, where individuals, for example, are being you know, funneled into a system that is not prepared to receive them. Most of the people who were treating these individuals, they were from the public health service, and they were given to people who were properly, not properly trained to own you know, homes that were not properly prepared. And that's one of the problems that we have. So yes, it is true that uh, organizational health maintenance organizations such as Momentum and others may be paying out, but they are only paying out to the minority. Exactly. The major Any problem is actually can... is the on exactly yeah okay I mean, the, the, the uh, hidden majority, and that is where the problem is. Okay, so how can the hidden majority get this sort of access, and where are we failing? I mean, life acidemia, as awful as it was, yeah. at least revealed to us how people are being treated and the sort of facilities that they face. Well, I think part of the problem is that we needed a tragedy like this yeah. to reveal to us mm. how much mental health needs to be put on the map. So that's the first problem, that we needed something like this to trigger us. But the next, I mean, obviously we need, we need more of a budget. Mm. So we need to have continued conversations. I think the problem with life is to many is that we, when big things happen, people are quick to talk about mental health, but these are not sustained conversations we're having. So we're obviously needing more allocation of a budget, mm. and we need plans which can be actualized using that budget. I think sometimes it, you can have these really great laid plans, but practically on the ground, they're not implementable, and therefore people can't really make use of the rights and the services they should be having. Uh <laughs> Excuse me, and we don't have the skill set in South Africa, do we? Yeah. Why is it so hard to get people to work in that area? Well, I think there's that n not that many jobs available. If you think about it, the most practitioners are serving a minority because there's no jobs in state available. Right. And um, uh, Sylvester Chim, I mean, if this is not addressed now, what sort of impact will it have on us going forward? What sort of fallout will there be in our society? Well, you know, like I said, it's a global problem, and the World Health Organization is drawing attention to it. In our own environment, we have to be aware. Now that we said we don't have the skill sets, but we do have a lot of, uh, one of the things that we have to realize is that we have a lot of social workers, for example, who are unemployed. We, have, we are coming up with nurses who are unemployed who could be retrained to be mental health care nurses. So we do have some of the manpower available, but we don't have the resources not being devoted to actually you know, uh, employ these people so that they can actually solve some of these problems. But, because but do we some actually of the have preventative we have in measures of, in place you know, that we can quickly roll out? Pre precisely. The, the preventative measure we're talking about here, the laws are there. Okay, we know what to do. The problem is that, you know, like in his SED make the case, most of the treatment is being given, is becoming a tenderized thing. You know, so you, you, so you, you give it to somebody who has access but not necessarily the person who is trained. So one of the things we have to do is this. Uh, well, uh, uh, these are just suggestions. Some of the things is this. We have to, even though we don't have enough resources to go around health for health care overall, we have to kind of prioritize the issue of mental health care services because we know it's going to become a public health problem if it's uncontrolled. That's one thing. Secondly, part of the prioritization is that we have to devote money to employing those people who can actually assist in resolving the problem. Like I said, uh, example of, uh, you know, if you check the statistics, we know a lot of social workers are graduating. They are not being uh, catered for. They are not being employed because they say, oh, there's no money. But these are the people who are going to go to the families, to individuals, and sort out these problems. In other words, identify people who actually need help and need mental health care services. Also, if we have a, a short, you know, an abundance of nurses who are unemployed, those people can be trained to become mental health care nurses and things like that. And the government has to devote a certain, a prioritized employment of these individuals so that it can be able to actually go through to the Okay, because a lot can, like can be done. Assess as but, but well also, as solve uh, this problem. You know, we're also hearing the solutions from the sort of top down. I should imagine that this is something that needs to be addressed early on in life. Uh, in terms of mental health, yes. Well, I mean, at the moment, we are in a very reactive space when yeah. it comes to mental health as a society and as individuals. We wait until extremes happen, mm -hmm. and that's also with access to care. Because we're so blocked up in our hospitals, the extreme cases get treated first, mm -hmm. which make them more chronic and more long-lasting. So we need preventative measures, and those need to be put into place. But at the moment, because we have no space to even treat people mm -hmm. that are presenting now, we, we don't even have a mind to think about preventative, but it's where we should start going. And tell us what the biggest 
problems are and how important it is for everybody to identify those problems? Mm. Well, the first thing is I think everybody needs to know they've got mental health and that it needs to be sustained and maintained. But the most common things you'll start to see, I think it's one in six will have, has an anxiety disorder, depression or substance. And that's not even getting to things like mood, which is bipolar and schizophrenia. So one in six South Africans, that's huge. That's Having an anxiety disorder, depression or a substance problem. And this is something that could be treated quite successfully. 100%, and the quicker we can get people in, the better the prognosis actually. Mm. Cassandra Governor, Sylvester Chima, thank you very much for joining us. That's our show for tonight. News is up next. I'll see you then.